Here's a question that might be interesting to the American population. Why are liberal Western European countries that believe in COVID receiving anti-mask demonstrations? Why are there mass anti-mask anti-COVID demonstrations? And I thought this was pretty interesting because I realized as somebody who is temporarily staying in Europe that this isn't something that might be widely known unless you live here. And the reason for that is because there's really kind of two different ways that this manifests itself. This being the anti-mask, anti-regulation protests. And I'm going to use two different countries. I'm going to use Netherlands and France as two different case studies. And I think you guys are going to find this to be a little funny and kind of appreciate it. So right now, Netherlands just had another requirement for face masks, which has been in effect this whole time. Um, but they've cracked down on some other additional rules as well, whether it be the 1.5 meter social distancing rules. There's a strong recommendation not to be outside or drive during rush hour. I don't know if they're making it, uh, giving people fines for being out during that period of time or not. I think not, but that is a thing that's been incorporated throughout Europe in general. Like France had these types of things as well, where you could get fined if you're outside at a particular period of time. But nonetheless, they're cracking down on it more so now, and that's the point. So what's interesting about Netherlands, though, is Netherlands and what's relevant is that they have really, really high public trust. Their public trust, which if you're listening to this, I'm showing a graph right now, it's a global scale of public trust. They trust each other, the random person on the street, 66% of the time, which in the US it is 40% of the time, give or take a couple percent. And that's very relevant. And so... What they're protesting, as individuals who widely agree that COVID is significant and masks are significant in trying to fight this, what they're protesting, hilariously enough, isn't that they don't agree with these things. They're mad because they trust each other to follow these types of requirements, but they're mad that the government doesn't trust them to follow through on their requirements. Therefore, they are making it mandatory. And not they're not mad because they have to do these things. They're mad because the government doesn't trust them when they trust each other to follow this without any sort of enforcement. I thought that was kind of funny. It's like, all right, fair enough, fair enough. On the other hand, we have France. So France is funny because... I live in Paris right now. It's a sketchy place. It is. It really is. Sorry if you're Parisian and you hear this and you're mad at me. I don't really give a shit, to be honest. They trust each other 19% of the time. So more or less half of what we do in the U.S. And you know how much we trust each other in the U.S. You know your neighbor. You, you know how this goes. Well, in Paris, specifically France in general, nobody has any sort of public trust. So generally speaking, they appreciate government mandates because they don't trust each other to actually follow these mandates unless they're enforced. And so the question obviously is why would there be anti-mask protests, which as another fact, uh, three out of four people support mask mandates in France. Well, there's an individual named Bristille and he's a a uh, social science professor at University of Strasbourg. And he actually surveyed a thousand anti-mask protesters about why they decided to protest. And they'd found four different reasons. Number one, masks are useless in preventing COVID-19 contamination. Number two, they're dangerous because they cause breathing difficulties and are a, quote, hive of bacteria. Number three, the coronavirus pandemic is over or never existed and the governments have lied to the people. And number four, that masks are being used to control the people. Well, that's pretty interesting because that's essentially what we see in the U.S. as well in terms of what people's motivations to resist these mandates actually are. And so what we see is even though in Europe we oftentimes have more liberal governments, that doesn't necessarily mean the people are always more liberal. What I also find to be uniquely interesting is that none of these protests are scarcely ever covered by the government. Now, if you look up, for example, some French newspapers, you might see any like some sort of an article from a few months ago showing there's a protest, but the protest not only happened, they happened right outside my window. I have not filmed these yet because I'm not familiar enough with Paris to feel comfortable to film because it is, again, like I've said, kind of a sketchy situation. I mean, even me walking home, they make me take my backpack off the police 
so they can search my backpack before I continue on with my walk. So the threat of bombs and all these other things are very uh, apparent. And so I don't really want to roll the dice more because I feel like I'm already on my last cat life anyway. So anyway, liberal governments doesn't make a difference. Sometimes people are resistant and don't exactly believe in COVID. However, in Europe, we see two different instances where people are resistant of mandates. Number one, uh, Netherlands, they believe in COVID, but they don't like their government enforcing it. And number two, France, who believes in enforcement, but they don't believe in COVID. Food for thought.